Hi, it's Chin. And today we're going to talk about Eastern practice. So I'm in my studio, Hai Tuanas, and my program we call a Purposeful Exercise System. I'm combining the East and the West together. So the video I upload on Tuesday is all about how to move in the spine properly, knowing the muscles name, everything. So physiology, right, anatomy, kinesiology, how to use the right muscle to move. And now we're going to apply that into the Qigong and Tai Chi train. So from now on, Tuesday, the video I'm uploading will talk about more of the Western style. And the Thursday video will be more of an Eastern. We're going to combine because it's the same body. It's the same muscle need to do the same thing. They are, they have a root, okay? They have a really natural law how they move. So if you, um, that's why I love to introduce you to the kinesiology and anatomy and kinesiology is how to move the muscles. And the Western, and the East, that's Western style. The Eastern is have a different modality how to move, focus on that beautiful spiral movement, okay? So, again, you know, we have in the skeletal system, you have appendicular, your arm and your leg, your spine, including your brain, okay? And your spine, the rib cage, all the way down, or your internal organ, that's a axial skeleton, that's the most important one. So we're gonna use the mind and through the nerve and the blood, carry the chi, that's chi is the energy, come from what oxygen and nutrition, okay? So now your body convert that into energy, right? So carry by the blood from your heart, deliver those oxygen to your every single cell, 50 trillion cells. And then food, your body convert from the stomach, right, goes into the digestive, and converts to the small intestine to liver, or convert into also energy from the food. So qi, qigong, the qi character is two things, air and rice. That's how simple that character is. It's going to be in my book, and if you come to take the workshop, I will definitely write out easier for you. So everybody looking for that book, I am too. I'm still working on the last part of it. My daughter in London is taking over now to help me with all the layout and the beautiful in design, how to fix everything that we already have into the right place. So anyway, we're gonna go right to move. So Qigong on Thursday, which is the second on um, Thursday video. We're gonna talk about the fundamental of Qigong. I don't care what kind of set Qigong you're doing, you're using your body. So how do you use your body correctly? How to create a wave and spiral movement? That's the whole thing, okay? If you're not using the spine, so which is what inside the spine is what cerebral spinal fluid. So to me, that's your fountain of the youth. You want that fluid nice and flow and moving beautifully. So how, how can that happen? Is by moving the spine. So we already talked about, I'm going to put the end card for you so you, you don't miss that, how to do it on the floor and how to do it even smoothly standing, right? You don't tell you to you can practice anywhere. At your office, standing, when you go for a hike, take a walk in the park, it's beautiful. You don't need to find the floor to lie down. So it's very, very useful, okay? So here we go. There are eight basic stance. <clears throat> in ballet, we have five, right? All turn up. First position, second, third, fourth, and the fifth. Okay, so there are five stance. So every time you exercise, you always look the foot position first because that will connect to the Mother Earth. So in Qigong Tai Chi Chan, we have eight. We're only going to learn four today for you to practice. Little by little, then you can apply it into any sets. You, if you're doing the eight pieces brocade for season, you know, Qigong, anything, or five element Qigong, it's the same application. Well, choreography is different. So you need to be right, do it right, so you can apply. So you don't sing one song in your life, but you learn the scale, you can play many music, you can sing many songs, okay? But, the, but you have to hit the C, 
right? C, D, F, G, in the right tone, right place. So people don't go, oh my God, Trini singing again. I can't listen to her. So anyway, here we go. The very first dance is called the horse dance. The bottom you feel again, three points, heel, big toe, and the little toe. Remember that three point? Or the five trip point? There's so many points, I'm sorry. So three and five, we're gonna hear that a lot, okay? So that's three points. So I have a beautiful standing posture, right? So good posture. Now from here, I'm gonna bend my knee. A lot of movement in Qigong Tai Chi is knee bend. So what we can move easier with the joint, the hip socket and the knee and your foot. Arch your foot always lifted. Don't let it drop. That's not good for your meniscus or knee injury and sometimes ankle getting really kind of a little awkward too. Okay, so from here, I'm in my arm on the side. I'm going to slowly lift my right heel off. I'm going to slowly, so I'm balanced already, take it out to the side a little bit. Then you can adjust that leg. So that's the horse stance. You can see your toes forward, heel back. It's in parallel position, legs in parallel position. It's a little wider than your shoulder. Um, something about my, my mic level here, you know, somehow I quit. So it might be a little hard for you to hear. I have to try to find out what has going on to my sound system, but we're, but we're gonna keep learning. So this is called a horse stance. For me, I call it a spiritual triangle. So you're gonna get a beautiful triangle, just go a little more. You can start feeling how important to strengthen that quadricep. So engage, okay, so this is called a horse stance. And I'm gonna shift my weight and travel a little back and forth to side to side actually. I put weight here first, and then slowly pick that foot up, put it down, and then standing up. I'm gonna do that again. Bend your knee, so we make it alive now. How to get to a horse stance properly? Toe drop first, toe touching down, articulate feet, bring yourself right into center. If you need to move the other leg a little bit, go for it, but that's okay. Gradually, you know exactly how why because you've been practiced. Okay, so now I'm gonna slowly bring back in so I'm transfer weight. I'm strengthening this quadricep and I know how to flex the knee and hip to bring in so I don't lift the power, you'll fall right away. Okay, so I'm come to center a little bit. The same idea, I can travel the other way. So I'm bend my knee and then pull most of my weight on this. See the arch was lifted. That's why I'm wearing square, I want to see all of it very clearly. And this actually exhale, exhale, exercise skirt, sorry. And we're gonna go to center. Okay, once you're here, you're gonna shift your weight back to here and slowly bring it back. So this is really my balancing challenge. Simply, right? We're gonna do the other side again. Inhale. And exhale. And coming back on the inhale, slowly. So your breath is deeper and slower, okay? So inhale, you feel the lungs. And exhale, you transfer center. We're gonna come back, inhale. Slowly, find totally, totally connect before you transfer. So don't go fast because then you go somewhere because you're not connected to your body. You want to feel. I'm on the three points. My first responder is here. And my body is totally upright, so I don't look like old lady, right? It's okay, you can start from there, but gradually you know it has to come up. So that's the horse stance, how to travel and how to get there properly. Now, uh, the missing part I was saying is moving the spine. So we want to use the breath to move in the spine, okay? So that's a nice balancing challenge, right? So now, how to move the spine? I love to use to reverse the downward breathing. So if you go to the purposeful move and night focus, focus two is the breathing, normal downward, reverse the downward and relaxation. And then the season change, there's a little bit of training too, because everything is about change. That's always constant. So I'm gonna stand in this way, diagonal bit, 
so you can see my body better, see my spot, okay, even more, okay. So you can see I flex my hip, that's the horse stance. This is not, this is sitting on the couch stance, right? So you, now you're going to horse stance, you sit right on the horse like you're sitting, so you want to feel both sits bone to the front knee bend. If you're strong, you can go a little more. But you don't want to do that. You pelvis anterior to or posterior to. That's not. I hope you don't. Um, wear off that lower back. Okay, so find the first responder. So that's it. Now I'm going to put one hand in the sacrum, one hand on the lower dantian. Dantians mean elixir field. You have three of them. See, a lot of three and five. So lower, middle, kind of pretty much where your long and heart is. And the third one, the upper dantian, they think about the focus, which is their eye. So pituitary pineal gland. Okay, we're gonna talk about all that later on. So now how to move your spine. I love using reverse abdominal breathing. So we just do practice breathing three times, then use it to move your spine. So I'm here. If this is too hard for you to breathe three times, you can sit down. Okay, so ready? And then inhale and feel the energy from the arch of my foot, come up to inner thigh, pelvic floor, first responder, remember? So that's the three muscles here. On the exhale, I'm going to release the pelvic floor. Don't push the tummy out, just let it go. Now inhale again, inner thigh, pelvic floor, first responder. So everything's coming up, the diaphragm is going down. Exhale, diaphragm, release, going back up, you can change that, okay? Then you release the pelvic floor. So this is my diaphragm, this is my pelvic floor. I'm just showing what's happening inside. Again, inhale, diaphragm is going down. You, use your mind, lift the pelvic floor, pull the navel to your spine. Ah, can you feel your spine is opening already naturally? And you're going to root it down, exhale, you're going to feel energy travel, spiral all the way down. To the three from the three points arch posterior lifter and travel all the way below the floor okay so stand up this is stand up to release the tension we're going to use that to move in the spine a little bit we're going to do four times so with here i'm getting to the horse stance again right body upright here we go inhale i'm going to pull my tummy in i'm open the lumbar area and exhale, I'm then sinking down. You see, I'm start undulating my spine very, very soft and quietly. Inhale, pelvic floor, tummy in, open the lower back. And exhale, release out. Again, inhale, pelvic floor, tummy goes in. And exhale. I'm not going up and down at all, right? So inhale, I'm coming up, but there's energy down, there's up, there's a down. Exhale, when you root down more, each vertebrae, special doing at the thoracic spine, you extend the spine. I'm going to say one more time. On the inhale, you actually flex the spine. You use the front side of muscle, right lower upper arrow. Exhale, you use the two V along with the erratic spinning. You extend. So when you flex back, we we'll call it extend. Okay, stand up. So that gives you a nice, what beautiful articulation of the spine. Very soft. So I'm coming back. So that's three things you can do during the horse in the horse stance. The horse stance is the first step to strengthen your quadricep. It's so much work. If you don't do it, it looks easy, right? Don't judge by the look, right? Don't judge the book on um, whatever person by the, right? don't judge by, by the cover. So you're gonna go into to understand better. Okay, now, the next stance is called arrow stance, and the third one is four, six stance. Four and six, okay, si, liu, hu. Si is mean four, liu, okay, is mean six, okay, so, those two works very well, very, very well together, but let's do the arrow stand first, okay? I'm going to stand in by a checkpoint I'm on the side. I bend both knees first so you can see better. So I'm going to slowly peel one leg off, okay? I'm going to take it to the back. See, in right in the hip socket. Take it to the back and lower the heel, soften the knee a little bit. So I have a 70% front, 
30 in the back. One, two, loop and back. So that's arrow steps. Now I shift my weight back and return. Okay, and we transfer from the other leg, right? So we have slowly peel the heel off. I'm looking forward so I know, right? The front's always north, remember? I'm staying directly back to the south. I bend the back knee a little bit, 70%, 30%. Shift your weight forward again, just like my four stands. Feel the weight goes all the way down. You softly bring in, okay? Inhale again, transfer weight. And exhale, lunging. My see my knees softly, not locking, okay? Because we're gonna move back and forth. So you don't get to place and lock in. And the what? The wave is gone, the flow is gone, so don't do that. And then transfer weight forward. So this is yang, this is in coming back. The in become yang with switch, just like you're walking. Inhale. Slowly coming up, lunging back, low the heel, bend the back knee a little bit. So this is called an arrow stance, right? Or forward lunge. So transfer weight. See, I'm articulating my heel, toe, ball, toe coming off and coming back. So that's how you can practice arrow stance each side, okay? If I face you, you will see I bend my knee. I'm going to Reaching back exactly same with my leg. I'm not going to cross. I'm not going to go too far because I'm going to feel my body and follow the hip socket straight back. Gradually, you're going to learn how to pivot a little better. But right now, this is the first steps, right? We're not going to jump into a fence. We'll never do that, right? If you don't know, you, you, you have to walk before you run, right? And before that, you have to crawl. You crawl, you walk, and then you run. Okay, then you can do skipping, any all kinds of movement, right? Hopping, jumping, leaping, but we're not gonna leap. We're gonna learn how to place them first. So, okay, so that's the arrow stance. When we go to the third one, okay, so from here, I bend both my knee, engage your abdominal, slowly peel off. I'm going to the Arrow stance first, because the four, six stance happen here. If I shift my weight back a little bit, your knee and second toe lined up. So I usually turn out a little bit, it's a little easier. The arch of foot always lift, but don't let it drop. Can you see that's not good? Because so, what well, I'm gonna do all this based on the wellness, okay? We're not gonna contort and anything. So that's four, six stance, 60%, 30%. So I can take my leg off and come back here, okay? Or I can take leg off in the martial art, which is Tai Chi Chuan, you can kick. So either here, see that leg's always free. Does it make sense? So it's really, you're learning how to transfer weight, right? I mean, you don't want to stand in one place, there's nothing, but that's the base. You want to walk, you want to run, you want to dance, when you dance, you transfer weight all the time, right? The leg changing, right? Even cha-cha-cha, right? So it constant changing weight. So you need to learn how to transfer weight and what, what style of movement you're doing. So much going on, so much fun. So you don't just play forever, right? Then what happened? You only do one side. And you start having problems because it's not even, okay? So that's why more than you think. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the other leg. So I'm bend both knee, transfer weight. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to the lunging. Okay, I shift my weight. So I use my front leg to push my weight, to shift my weight to the back leg. Slide and lightly rotate. So knee lined up the second toe, arch your foot. Both arch always lift the three points up. Okay, so kind of like a suction cup because the arch is lift. Then going forward, this is arrow stance and this is four six stance. So what happens, once you get there, you can slowly bring in, and then it goes out again. See, now you have movement, okay? Guess what? We're gonna add the spine movement. We call it rocking. So ready, I'm start bending. 
and pick this leg up, going to the lunging and pivot just a little bit. I continue to go back, so this is Siliopo. So once I pull my weight on the back side of the leg, I push my right leg, I catch that energy, I push forward. So let's go down, you come back. We call it rocking. You rocking forward and back. What happened? Kind of like a ping pong. The ping pong ball go boom and going forward. Or we do it slow. And boom and you're going back. We're gonna add a spine now. Okay, so reverse the downward breathing. You can put your hands in here. Okay. Lower dantian, middle dantian, so where it's kind of cover the lumbar and you throw at six spine. So you ready? Arch foot lifted, don't lock your knee. So ready, inhale, energy come up to the pelvic floor, tummy in. Open the L2 and 3, we call it Minman, the gate of life. So as you go down, you push forward. Now extend. And inhale, reverse it down the breathing. Exhale, you push it forward. So we create a beautiful wave of the spine. Okay, so we'll just start with the wave first before we do the spiral, right? So we start from the beginning and exhale. You see, I'm not using the scapula, I'm not using the head. Sometimes people like to use the head and then you're gonna throw up because it's getting very dizzy. So inhale one last time, shift your weight back. As soon as you receive, you're going back forward to extend your spine. Now I'm gonna switch sides and bring right up. See the movement, we're doing movement now, right? Beautiful movement. Inhale, push from the arch your foot to the back. You open the movement. Exhale, that's between L2 and 3. Inhale, my mentor, Dr. Yang Junmi, taught me so, so much, this dancer. Inhale, exhale. I learned about, I have to change from dancing, teaching dance, choreograph dance, into wellness because life has changed so much that make you focus more about wellness, right? Going in without health, you don't have life, right? Without health, people say, I don't have time for health. I say, well, that's good because health has no time for you. And don't say stuff like that because it's only one body. Who lives in here? You. Not the doctor. I hope it's not the doctor. Otherwise, you'd be drugs all day long, surgery, so we don't want that, okay? That's, that's, that's traumatic, right? That's something very unfortunate happened. But if you don't want to go there, then take care of yourself. Okay, so you ready? So that's, you learned three already. Horse sense, okay? Arrow sense, four, six sense. See how we change that? Horse sense, arrow sense. Four, six cents. You can see how they all connect together, right? The fourth one today we call it false sense. That's mean false is mean not your one leg doesn't have a lot of weight. So from here, beginning. I'm gonna step to the side. I'm turn my body a little bit so this is north. I'm turning to northwest. I'm picking up the weight here and I tap. Okay? So that's mean this leg has all the weight, this one not. But this one is ready to go somewhere. You can go anywhere you want. Also, you can go change, right? So, so this leg has a lot of opportunity, okay? But support by this leg. So yin, yang always happen, okay? So I'm go into right and left, okay? So I bend my knee and slowly take to the side and I turn my body, this is called a false stance. False, not real. Inhale and exhale. I am facing northeast corner. I'm gonna step down, transfer the weight, so pushing from here, stand and false stance. I'm facing the northwest corner. And the inhale and the exhale. So this is right. All balanced. Next week we'll talk about the golden rooster. So right now you need this. You really need this strong. So this leg can be free to do anything. Step there, step there, step forward, or kicking, right? Or also can change way to changing, kick this way. So a lot of times people say, 
I'm gonna kick you, and then somebody come back, you're gonna go, ooh, right? So I'm sorry. And I uh, love to make a little bit of uh, image so you guys understand how kind of see how it goes, but I'm not a really good martial artist. So <laughs> I, just, I can imitate. So from here, one more time, and you step to the side, you're looking over there. I love the theory of the Qigong and the martial art. It's all about strengthening your body and self-defense, right? If you don't have strength, you can self-defense. You know, self-defense what? Virus. <laughs> self-defense, people try to hurt you. And go. And also if you're strong, no one really can hurt you because you don't get bothered by it. We're not bothered by your words, right? And inhale, exhale. And again, inhale and exhale. Because we know how to change situation. And exhale. People don't understand you. You try to somehow uh, situation arrive. And you have you can help them change their thoughts about you. If they don't want to. You just wait, right? Exhale, time will change everything. So that's false stance, okay? So now if you, how you move your spine is much harder, right? So here you go. Inhale, tummy in. Stand, so I give you two set of breath. Inhale, I gently use my abdominal, lift the leg. Exhale, I stay. Inhale again, so the spine movement is so much smaller. So complement each other. So you don't want to what? You don't want to do so much without awareness, then you end up falling. Inhale. And exhale, spine neutral, return. Inhale again, reverse the downward breathing. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. Hollow tummy to bring. Exhale. Very good. Inhale and exhale. You can do two set of breaths, right? So I just did one set. Inhale into an exhale. Again, inhale. So it's level one and exhale. So I'm going to do this again. Inhale. Exhale. This is the level one. Sink, sink, sink. So spine goes up. Inhale, the energy goes up. And exhale. So that's level one. Level two is one breath. Inhale. Ex. In. Right? So I'm sorry. Inhale, get there. And exhale, return. So you don't really need to do fast. Do it slow. The idea is slow. The slow is better because why you can challenging the balance you can challenge the mind body connection with the breath so today four basic stance for practice qigong or tai chi trend so next thursday you will learn the other four so you, you know now it's gonna be a little more challenging the next four okay so this horse stance arrow stance Four, six stands become rocking, right? You're always adding the spine movement to with the reverse down of breathing. Then again, so you can do this and turn, and this and turn. So that's called a false stance. So you really get up to a little faster because just reviewing. Um, so those are the four stands for training Qigong Tai Chi Tran. So basic movement, learn well. You feel you feel the result, you can get a much more benefit of the bone density and what balance. And what charge, the best part is what charging the synopsis. So what happened? You create new brain cell. Right? So stay away, keep your body, your mind away from the what? Dementia, right? Parkinson, all this stuff. Try to move in the spine properly. Create a uh, to uh, stimulate the cerebral spinal fluid. I'm going to try to write it out on the video anyway because uh, 
I didn't have the microphone. I have to figure out my problem now. Okay, so thank you so much. And uh, check out my website or check other video on the YouTube. And the book will come out hopefully by January. And, and hopefully by then we can travel and take classes at my studio. I would love to see you take good care and bring all your questions. Have a wonderful day.